podcast for heroes in the world of Overwatch. This is The Payload. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 13 of The Payload. We are an Overwatch podcast from blizzpro.com. I'm John Horstman and with me is the man from Ventura, California. It is Mr. Jimmy Bloxham. Hey Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, Kevin looks a little different today. I mean, look at that. He does. He's got a turret up his butt, that's why. (laughs) Speaking of turrets, some turrets have changed in in the Overwatch lately. Yes, we are definitely going to get to talk a bunch about all the changes coming into Overwatch. Uh, just this last week, we've had a lot of stuff happen this week. Uh, it's been exciting playing the beta. I've played a lot of Overwatch. I feel like I've played a lot, even though mm-hmm. my level doesn't reflect it. Probably I know, more because I lose. It- yeah, and then you look at someone like uh, Ask Joshi, and he's like level 60 or something absurd like that. I mean, he's... He's way up there. I have three or four people who are in the mid to high 40s. It's pretty ridiculous. That's impressive. That's a lot of experience in Overwatch. It's a lot. Like, and after, what, rank 23? Well, rank 23 is 22,000 22, XP, and that's the max mm-hmm. experience. So it doesn't scale beyond there. But on average, if, you, if you're a decent player and you get about 2,000 experience per win that's still 11 wins per level that's 11 if you win all of them that's 11 matches between levels which means and that so that's an average of what five minutes a game maybe more eight maybe a little bit more yes like yeah. seven eight yeah so seven times 11 times 11 so we got 77, 77 minutes <laughs> minutes per level Teeny at bit over best case scenario and 40 levels Get a life, guys. Jeez. <laughs> it's like they're content creators or something. I know. Actually, if I if I could just focus on creating content for Overwatch, I would be up there as well. Oh yeah. If I if if my job was creating content, I would I would definitely be up there. Oh my gosh. But you real will- life gets in the way. <laughs> Right. You may notice that we are missing a voice this week. Uh, Kevin has an incredible opportunity. He's going to be casting the North America preliminaries uh, for Hearthstone. So he's in California. We wish him the best of luck this weekend. We're rooting you on, Kev. Make us proud and all that jazz. So, well, Jimmy, since we get to talk about it, we're always excited to talk about it. How was your week in Overwatch? What have you been up to? Have you been focusing on any specific characters? It was good. I mean, I've been trying to play more tanks, and Zarya has kind of been my focus there. I really love her play style, and now that I've kind of figured out how to use her self-shield to buff her damage uh, effectively, it's really been a lot of fun doing just playing that, that hero now. But it, I just keep falling back on Farah just because she's such a comfort pick for me, and I I do pre- fairly well with her. So I just keep falling back on her uh, as as I play games because I I get a little competitive. I'm like, oh, we're losing this game, and uh, I'd really like us to win, so I'm gonna switch to Farah. Uh, how about yours, John? I mean, it was really good. I I'm feeling really confident with Lucio. Diva, which is kind of interesting, but Diva and Tracer has been one of my new ones. And I've been cheesing that Bastion a little bit too. When I just, when I'm feeling really just angry and aggressive. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've been up to as well. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. I, we haven't gotten to play together yet. Have we? No, we did uh, a couple of nights ago, or last. I think it was last week with uh, who was it? Oh yeah, we played with um, some of oh, the Hearthaholics guys. Andres, yeah. yeah, that's that right. We did get to play for a little bit. 
That was way before I was even remotely comfortable, though. So I don't know if I could call. Yeah, that you were not happy playing that night. You were you were a little frustrated, I think. Me Which frustrated? Okay. Never. That's okay, though. It's part of the part of the learning process of any competitive game. Yeah, I know it's. It, and I'm really, I'm a really salty player as is when we do our well met post show streams and we're just, you know, playing the ladder. We're usually playing on my account. Mm-hmm. And because it's just way easier to stream that way. And oh, yeah. I am, they call, Kevin will call me the best BMer he has ever met. Um, my, my BM game is on point and I will make you know <laughs> it. I never BM too early. So I never BM and get raffle stomped. Anything like that. Precisely the right time. Precisely the right time. In like the worst case scenario, it's not like a taunt. It's a hello. (laughs) You know, just those little things that really get you going. Oh, my goodness. That's good. We need to get back on topic, though, and talk about Overwatch. Let's go into the news. This week in Overwatch. So this week, it was actually a fairly slow news week up until... About uh, five, six hours ago, and it might, a new- it might have been even closer than that, but it was really right before the show came on. Yeah, so we got a new patch up, and Jimmy, why don't you go ahead and take us through this patch a little bit? Yeah, so there was a patch release today, mostly balance changes. They they added some some just general miscellaneous stuff. Completed a tuning pass for end of match commendations increase the cooldown on using voice lines so that'll be a little less spammy and taunting over there from john <laughs> i haven't learned to bm yet in overwatch you don't have to worry about that yet <laughs> there you go but the the hero balance changes bastion getting a lot of uh, work done on him uh, his recon configuration maximum weapon spread has been decreased by 25 percent the century configuration no longer gains any armor bonus and all changes to the bullet damage from that February 9th patch. They're, they're gone. They've been reverted. And so the developer comments were uh, that they've given configuration recon a bit of a boost to allow Bastion to run and gun more effectively when needed. And that they've also made significant changes to his survivability and offensive capabilities in Sentry. By removing the 300 additional armor, Bastion is now more vulnerable to attack. However, its overall damage output has been increased as a result of reverting the earlier nerfs to the bullet damage from the patch uh, two weeks ago. We're very eager to see how both these updates play out in the beta. I'm assuming you haven't had a chance to play Bastion yet since th- this patch came out. I well, haven't. What, what do you What do you think of these changes on on uh, on paper? I mean, I I like what they're going for. Like Bastion shouldn't be totally crap when you're moving around and then totally OP when you can find a place to stay still because on defense, it's just way too easy to do that. Right. And so making him have a little bit less survivability, making his recon mode a little bit more viable, evens that out a little bit. I do still think that he can't be too strong in both because obviously you know, that's also OP. So I think, uh, I I don't know. I I think I always felt that in recon mode, he was actually fairly fine, except for he was really slow. He has no movement type of stuff, but that, uh, armor, that's a big change. I mean, there was a few games and like I said, I, I cheesed a little bit of bastion knowing that we're (laughs) going to see, uh, a change and we were going to see a nerf. So I cheesed him a little bit and I random match with a guy who I ended up playing for like four or five games who played a really awesome mercy. And you know, on temple of Anubis where uh, you're on, you're defending. And so you can just set up yeah. right there on the right by the stairs. And he was just healing me on the back and they couldn't even get past it. And if they did, they would try to sneak over to that right staircase right by me. And we had a tracer just sitting there. Yeah. So that's a uh, right before capture point A, right? That's right at the beginning of that map. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Yep. So okay, for the yeah. first part. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I could see that being very frustrating to play. Against. Yeah. And so between that and then uh, he would put his damage boost on me until I would get 
that and nothing. I mean, a full clip will tear through a whole Torbjorn or not a Torbjorn Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. Uh, will will tear through that whole thing. And about it takes about I feel like about a hundred to a hundred and twenty bullets to tear through that shield. It's oh. I mean it's just ridiculous how strong it is. So like they would try to get behind a Reinhardt shield, but it was too slow, and then it would fall off. And then I would kill the Reinhardt, and then kill like two or three other people. I posted a picture on Twitter. I had like almost thirty eliminations that game. It was pretty ridiculous. One guy, he was a level fifty ish in on the opposing team, and in uh, in the game chat, he's like, "I have not been beat this bad in oh, all no. fifty levels." And I'm like, "The oh, thing no. that's going to be feel the worst is I am awful at this game in every other aspect." <laughs> so I got that one time in. Oh, man. Hopefully, people listening to the show don't hate me too much. I promise I won't do that again. It was a night. I was sad. I had a lot of homework to do. I was just needed to get some aggression out. So that's what I did. There you go. Yeah. I. The only thing I'm worried about is just completely removing the 300 armor. Like, couldn't you have just taken it down a notch or two instead of just completely removing it? I'm a little worried that that's a little too far to the other side, but... That's kind of how I feel about. So we still have three hundred health, team. right? Yeah. I would think so. I'm not. I'm not sure though. Yeah. So I think he's still at three hundred, and then most of like the the least health pool I think is Tracer or Diva out of her mech, and it's like one fifty or two hundred or something like that. So it's still yeah, significantly it's more. Um, I could see them coming back to the frontal shield type thing like as a balance because i think they might have taken the pendulum a little bit too far and you know basically made their the only advantage is that you have the turret Mm -hmm. in sentry mode right and so maybe they'll bring back a shield of like 150 from the front only and keep the vulnerable spots in the back yeah and that's the kind of the benefit of this being a, a beta right now and kind of really makes it a true beta is they're making some fairly uh, serious and significant changes here. Uh, Bastion being one and the other one really being Diva. And we're going to go over her changes right now. Diva's mech is no longer a mover aim locked after being called down. Thank you very much, Blizzard. I really appreciate that change. That is very nice. So that basically just means after you bring the mech back after Diva is out of the the mech and you have your ultimate, you call it back down. It it doesn't have that. Uh, you're kind of locked on where you're you're pointing there for a little bit. I think that me- just means you can move around pretty much instantaneously as soon as you call it down. Mm. Uh, Self destruct the ultimate charge now generates passively even when Diva is dead or her mech is destroyed. That is so huge. I. I can't imagine this not getting changed again in the future. That feels like such a good positive change for her. Cause uh, after playing her a bunch before in the, the first, I guess the, the first phase of the beta and just really liking how she played it. It took a little bit of time adjusting to um, in the second phase of beta where they changed the, the ultimates across the board from everybody and I feel like she was kind of really negatively affected by that because you want to you want to try to play a little bit aggressive with Diva, and being popped out of that mech, you're just like, well, you you almost want to just go die to, to right it's to get your mech back, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly, because it it just takes forever to to charge it up, and then the call mech. So this is kind of the second part of that complaint. Call mech, the ultimate cost is decreased by twenty percent, so you'll be able to get back into the mech a little bit faster now. Uh, developer comments. Um, pretty much in line with, with what I was thinking. The changes we made to how heroes gain ultimate charge in the February 9th beta patch had some unintended side, unintended side effects for D.Va, making it much harder for her to generate ultimate than before. These changes should help correct that pain point as well as provide a nice quality of life change to the process of summoning her mech. So... I'm a little worried this is a little too much, but we'll see. I haven't had a chance to play this uh, yet. What do you think? Do you want to play after the show? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we'll do it. We'll run (laughs) some D.Va after the show. I'll try my best to record it. Uh, We want to do better at recording and putting some stuff up there. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I like this change as a diva player. What What do you think? So something that. I feel like Diva really needs to be able to do well is play well at close range. And right now she does that, but with um when she when you pop out of the mech, it's basically it's the worst feeling in the world. Uh you're like, I don't know what to really do. Her little gun can do some actually serious damage. I've landed some shots, but you're it's more like a spray and pray kind of thing. Like you put it up at about Head or head height of most of the other players, and hope that you land a headshot or two to help the rest of your team, and also do damage, and hopefully get that ultimate back a little bit faster. But it's it can be really demoralizing um, when that happens. Getting it back faster is definitely something that I need there. And there have been a few times where I've had my ultimate, and I die. Or I don't die, but I get popped out of my mech, so I reset, and then you're back in, and then you reset again, which was so annoying, especially when I swore I hit that ultimate button before I got popped out of my mech. I swear to God, that happened. So, yeah, overall, I mean, I think it's positive change. I think it's needed. Diva still hasn't felt great since the betas returned. It just hasn't... It just hasn't felt awesome. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the range on her feels weird. I don't know if I don't like her uh, defense matrix anymore, if maybe that is not helpful enough or something like that. But these are definitely, I think, two steps in the right direction. And I'm excited to play her tonight and uh, see what happens. I know that you were talking about, though, before the show, you felt like maybe the pendulum had uh, swung a little too far. Are you still feeling that way? I I want to play with the. No, play, you have to make Diva. a you have to make a statement play. right now. Yes. Make a rash yes, I, judgment. I think it's I think it's going to be a little too much. We'll have to see, though. I mean, but right. yeah, I, I think it's we're going to see a lot of complaining about <laughs> the the explosive mech just shooting into people's payloads. All right. <laughs> that sounded really weird. To shoot it into your payload. Oh, um, man. Whoa, no, no, no. No, no, no. God. Oh, this is what, bad. What have I done? Let's keep going through the patch notes. Is there anything else <laughs> notable here in the patch notes? Uh, May her alternate fire the ammo cost degrees from 50 to 40. Nice change of pace. Yep. I, th- I think the other two big ones are the ones coming up here. Mercy, uh, Guardian Angel, can no longer target souls of dead allies. And basically the developer comments are that they got complaints that people were having problems targeting what they they wanted to target. And they were accidentally targeting dead allies instead of uh, uh, someone who was alive and pushing a point or whatever. So I, I feel like this is probably one of the more controversial changes because I think that gave Mercy a lot more options with her mobility. So... So on paper, on paper, I love being able to use Guardian Angel to move toward dead allies for a lot of reasons, but it is definitely very obvious that it's either they need to fix the targeting mechanism and maybe we'll see that. Maybe they take it out so they can fix kind of how it targets and then we get it put back in, but Targeting already with Mercy is relies so much for every part of it on, you know, kind of an AI system of who's the closest, who does it think that you're mm-hmm. actually trying to target. It's already so marginal as is that I think long term and especially for competitive play, that needs to feel good before we can see it in the game. But I know that you're pretty bummed about it. I can see in your face. I can see you're looking a little sad about yeah, it. Yeah, it's just Mercy doesn't have enough movement options, and I felt like this was a really good upgrade to her mobility in the game. So, But you're right. The, the targeting's a little wacky on it, especially uh, it, it. even though I, I had read the patch notes before, it, I went and played Mercy, and I was like, oh, you can... You can target dead people and, and move to them. It was, it was a little weird getting used to, but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. It's gone now. 
I wonder if there's a way to like make a modifier key or something to where maybe shift instead of like when instead of shift means that instead of using your left click and right click to damage buff or heal when you shift Mm -hmm. left means go to a live person in that area and right click means go to a dead person in that area like maybe there's a way to like have an intuitive toggling type system for that instead of relying on this kind of like ooh, you were closer to this live person <laughs> yeah. than this dead person so you're gonna do this no i definitely feel like there there can be a, uh, a happy medium put in here i we'll totally just have to agree. wait and see uh, the what other else? big change, Torbjorn, or is uh, JR has been referring to it, uh, uh, turret watch, I believe. Yep. <laughs> yep. Turret bullet damage decreased from 16 to 14. Turret repair amount decreased from 100 to 50 health per swing. The rivet gun maximum ammo disc decreased from 20 to 18. And the alternate fire cost decreased from 5 to 3. So... Just some, I feel like these are fairly minor changes, except maybe the, the repair amount. I mean, that's a pretty significant change. They did uh, say in the developer comments, Torbjorn search currently feel a little too powerful, so they're taking away some of their power as well as removing Torbjorn's ability to out-repair reasonable incoming damage. That's a good thing. Uh, Torbjorn's rivet gun is also getting a small boost to allow for more liberal use of his alternate fire when needed. On uh, really quick on the fly math here, I think you get six shots until you need to reload now instead of uh, four. So oh. that'll be uh, good for Torbjorn to be able to use that. And uh, I think this fixes some of the problems, but JR is already saying in chat that he's uh, having issues playing against Torbjorn already, even with the changes that are, I believe they're live in game. They said at the top that the patch is live. So I imagine it, it is live. And there was an interesting article. I think I linked it to you guys. Uh, it was on Kotaku. Uh, and there was just this, this shot of this tracer just barely getting into the, the line of sight of a turret. It just immediately, yes. the, the turret like turns like randomly how fast. It yeah, was, was instantly. Ridiculous. Like, like granted, the, the tracer had one HP, but I mean, still, like it was, she was hardly in view. The, well, the reaction of the turrets, and a lot of people have said <laughs> yeah. on Reddit, it's not necessarily the damage that the turrets are putting out. It's the fact that you cannot be in line of sight of the turret without taking damage at all. Where if, if it takes a tenth of a second even, that's enough to like, you know, start doing some damage. And to your point, well, to Blizzard's point, once you start... Uh, you know, trying to shoot it, you've got a Torbjorn smacking away at the back of that turret, healing it up. And you're like, well, if I shoot the Torbjorn, I die from the turret. If I shoot the turret, the turret, I can't do enough damage to kill it. So you're just like, <laughs> I, I can't deal with this. And then if you get two or three of those going at once in a reasonably sized area, it's just, you know, it's something that I think Blizzard is innovating through. And I think they're handling it the right way. You know, making... I think it's really easy when you're designing a mechanic like a turret. I think it's really easy to try to lean on, well, these aren't controlled on humans, so these should be virtually worthless. And we see that in a lot of other types of games and things like that. Think of, like, the turrets in Halo. Like, you can get on one of those turrets, and you can, you know, shoot some things, but any decent player is going to snipe you, you know, three-shot you, or something, and take you right off of that turret anyway. So it's almost like, who are the noobs who are going on the turret and going to take the bait? And I really appreciate that Blizzard has taken a much more, uh, you know, like, no, these are going to be legitimate things that you need to worry about. And you're going to need to deal with them in the right way and know how to deal with them. And you may not be able to deal with them every time. And I like that approach, but they're definitely, I think, still on the powerful side. Would you agree? Yeah, I would agree, and it, I know they've they've talked about this before. Jeff Kaplan has like kind of kind of pounded this into the ground that they're they're really trying to be careful with both Torbjorn and, and Bastion, and they don't they're they're like, well, 
they're very difficult to learn against in the beginning, but they were terrible at the high level. And now they're, they're trying to fix that. And they're, they're just having the hardest time getting this to, to work how they want it to work. I vote after the show, we go ahead and try to run like three Torbjorns, um, a Lucio and a Reinhardt. So you have a Reinhardt <laughs> oh in front of the three Torbjorns. Yeah. And then we have, um, obviously three Torbjorns. Then you have a Lucio on his heel and then just letting us go at it. We just repair, repair, repair. That's what we're going to try. I'm calling it the new meta right here. There you go. Uh, and there were other just general bug fixes. You can go read that on the, the Overwatch forums. There, nothing too crazy there. And I think that's it for the news. I think that is it. Let's move on yeah. to the uh, Eurogamer article by Chris Bratt mm-hmm. over at Eurogamer. Got to chat with uh, Jeff Kaplan a bit. Brought up some really interesting points about the longevity of the game and uh, small quality of life things and everything in between. We're just going to try to tackle this right down the middle here. So Jeff Kaplan has said that the core of the progression system is there. We've got more legendary skins and game modes coming straight from the article. So what do you think about that? More game modes? I think more game modes is going to be better for the game overall. I mean, I think we talked about this last week a little bit where I was like, you have to have a good balance. You don't want there to be too few game modes that people just get bored and burnt out. And you also don't want the hate to, to, to nag on Call of Duty, but Call of Duty has like 50 game modes. And eventually right. you're just going to have like four people trying to play that mode and you just can never get a get full rematch with the same people. Yeah. And yeah, and that's just not fun. Uh, I don't think Overwatch is really going to have that problem necessarily because you don't really get to quote unquote choose what game mode you're going to be playing. You're kind of just thrown into whatever they want to have you do. Right. Uh, so I'm excited for that. And anyone who thought there weren't more skins coming was crazy. Sorry, but there's, there yeah. it was obvious there was, they had skins for like the initial heroes that they had, they had announced, but there wasn't skins yet for people like diva and, and uh, I forget who else I was, I was surprised May, there is Genji. the may ha- actually has some, may skins, had though. some amazing ones. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's that like firefighter skin. that just looks amazing. I, hope i get that at some point they definitely did a great job i can't wait to see more of these skins i hope they never run out of creativity for it um because they're they're really cool i haven't gotten a single legendary skin yet i got a mccree rare one and then i got a lucio epic so it's like it's cool but it's it's nothing like totally amazing either so i'm ready for more of that stuff so we've had uh, the progression system now for a little over a week are you how are you enjoying it so far do you think it's in a good spot i think it's pretty good i just we we, i remember we were talking in slack about this we're kind of doing the math of how to unlock everything and i forget what we we came up on but it was a lot of hours of like 700 yeah so that'll be interesting. That That's assuming every box you unlock has something new for you that you don't have. I've actually already gotten duplicates for stuff, and I've only opened 10 boxes so far. And But yeah, I, I'm really enjoying the progression system so far. It, it gives you something to kind of to work towards. And when you kind of get towards the end of a level, I'm definitely more inclined to be like, oh, let's do one more game so I can get my, my next loot box and see if I get something good out of it. So I, and I think that's kind of the purpose of it is to keep people engaged and, and continue playing. So that's how I've uh, seen it so far. I mean, I don't think I'd changed really anything. Maybe, maybe a title system or something like that. That's the only thing I would probably add, but, that's I'm pretty happy with it. I like <laughs> title think, system. Sean? I mean, I think title system is a is a great like supplementary thing that they could do in the future to keep things fresh. Uh, I think the thing for me that I'm worried about is right now, like I said, we're not incredibly high ranked by any means. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but at rank 12 already, it feels a little slow to to go between loot boxes. Now, part of that might be intentional, but right now I think it's like 12,500 XP to the next level. So a little over half what it'll end up being once we hit level 23. Mm -hmm. And so I worry. I'm like, right now I'm like, oh, this feels a little grindy, but okay, like I'm, I'm in... I, I'm engaged to almost doubling that feels like that might take a little too long in my opinion. I, I would like to see those faster, but at the same time, I don't know how much it's going to end up like I'm going to end up playing. Maybe I, you know, fly through yeah, those levels or maybe you get and something too that uh, we've, you know, a lot of players online have kind of gone through and done the theory crafting about how much, uh, XP you get from a win and a loss, and you go at about the same rate, believe it or not. Like, it's it's not a huge... It's like a couple hundred XP difference from a win and a loss, which is a good thing, meaning that you it's it not like totally... 500, right? 500 XP, I think, for a win? Right, and it's like 250 for a loss? Yeah, something like that. And so, yeah, there's just... I don't know. I, I think that they they have some refining to do with the XP and what you get. Either give more for wins or maybe give less for losses. Because I've had people, too, who just don't try. They're like, why? Why would I try? We, we get these great XP yeah. anyway. And I'm like, come on, man. So, um, you know, I think one of the big things, though, too, is getting a, a gold medal in one of the five or six categories mm -hmm. that you have there. Like, that's really huge for XP. I think, isn't that another 500? Something like that. I forget it might the exact be. Value, yeah, I don't remember, but big. it's a lot. There, so were, there was a Reddit it, thread really, really breaking this down, which was cool to see. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think... Both of us are in agreement here. We're pretty pretty happy with the progression system so far. And I think, I don't know, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure we're ahead of Kevin. I think we are, too. I mean, to be fair, I highly doubt he's playing Overwatch the week he's preparing <laughs> for the Hearthstone NA preliminaries, but You're we're totally ahead of Kevin. You're going to pass to give him crap for that, though? You know, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. <laughs> uh, Unless I'm winning. <laughs> Uh, so let's go <laughs> let's go through something I really like and I've always like praised Blizzard for is kind of this next part. Uh Jeff Kaplan mm -hmm. starts talking about Blizzard games and how Mike or uh, yeah, Mike Morheim, why can I not I was I thinking to say Mark? Mike Morheim said that they consider their Blizzard games when they come out with a game, they consider it a life service. In other words, they plan on supporting it for a long, long time. Currently, we have World of Warcraft just celebrated, what, 11 years? Yes. Was it 11 or like 13? Ten, so, uh, I, I thought it was 11. Yeah, it might have been 11. Anyways, more than 10 years. You've got StarCraft 2 now, which, how old is StarCraft 2? It's like five or six years old. I yeah. still can't believe that. Like, I was at the, the launch for the... Wings of Liberty, and it seems like it wasn't that long ago, but it really was. And then Diablo 3 is what, what, four or five years? Yeah. It, does, it yeah. feels like just yesterday. It was, I remember it just came out when I was moving to Colorado and I needed podcasts to listen to. So I was listening to Diablo podcasts with no intention to actually play Diablo. <laughs> That's how it starts. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, if if I had friends who were into it, I'm sure I'd be addicted to Diablo, but just never had friends who got into it. So obviously they support these games for a really long time. Um, Heroes of the Storm is the newest. Yeah, well, well, to really further the point, you can still go and play Diablo 1 on Battle.net. That came out in what, 97? That's true. 1997? You can still go on and play StarCraft Brood War on Battle.net. I mean, Blizzard, they they don't do things like other companies do, where they, they shut down the servers. Yeah, and so it's really exciting, but I'm also a little nervous because the game as it exists right now is very straightforward. It is mm -hmm. very, yeah. you know, and 
what do you think it's going to take uh, for a game like Overwatch to be successful long term? I think a good variety of maps and modes. Obviously, it seems like modes are kind of going to be where they're really expanding the game. And I think maps are kind of just going to tie into that because that's what we're seeing with with the new mode uh, that just recently came out with, with the beta. And yeah, I think new heroes as well will always be, be helpful as well. Just injecting new life into the game, new, new personalities, like every, every hero we've talked about this so much and just how much personality every hero has and just how I think pretty much every person can kind of gravitate to it towards a hero and really have that, that hero resonate with them. And obviously that's going to be, expanded upon with all the the out of game stuff that they're going to have with the the lore and everything like that. So I I think they have a they probably have a very long-term goal for for Overwatch and it'll be interesting to see how it how it rolls out. I actually think and I think this is kind of bold of me to say but maybe not, but I really think that the success of Overwatch is going to be in the competitive landscape. Um, you've seen it with like League of Legends where, I mean, there's no story mode. There's no, it's literally yep. go in, pick your heroes, queue and go. Right. And largely that's going to be Overwatch as well. Outside of the supplementary stuff that they're going to be doing, like, uh, graphic novels and, uh, digital shorts and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the other part of what I think it needs is I think it needs a rich like story and world that people are invested in. Um, Blizzard does that so freaking well. And so far, to be completely honest, I am the most excited and the most intrigued by the Overwatch story than any of Blizzard's IPs. And that might be bold to say, but I want to know... Everything about this world. I I don't think it's too bold because, I mean, this is... You and I have been Blizzard fans for a while, and we've just had these three core properties, Diablo, StarCraft, and Warcraft. This is their first new property in a long, long time. 18 years. Yeah. 1998. We're we're really wanting to see what they do with this, where the story's going to go. Why are all these characters having to come out of retirement and fight and all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it seems like a super rich world and like, they just hit it out of the park with that launch trailer announcement. Like that was just, I'm always going to come back to talking about that. Cause being there at BlizzCon for that was just, I don't know. It was an experience. If Blizzard ever goes bankrupt, which they will not, as we learned from the earnings <laughs> call this last, yeah. this like week, they won't, they are nowhere close to going bankrupt. Uh, their cinematic team uh, can definitely take on Pixar head to, head to head, yeah. Because they much. have got an incredible cinematic t- team. So I agree with you. I think Overwatch does have the ability to be a long term game, but uh, it was really interesting to see Jeff Kaplan kind of. I don't know if he was trying to take the humble route or if he was just truly being completely candid. But check this out. What he says, um, he goes, I have no idea how Overwatch is going to be received, where they have critical feedback of the game. He's talking about uh, fans and players of the game. Uh, We agree with their feedback. We're worried about the same things that they're worried about. Will it be a huge game? I don't think that's for the, or he goes, will it be a huge game? I think that's for the community to determine on launch day and beyond. And so that's, I mean, is that, do you think that's humility that he's coming from? Or do you think he's trying to kind of uh, temper the uh, expectations (laughs) a little bit too much or a little bit more? Like, what do you think he's going for here? I, I honestly think he's humble. I mean, just knowing a little bit of Blizzard from the inside a bit, they, they kind of all are very humble and they're, if you want to really look at it, we, we can go back to the launch of World of Warcraft and they had like no clue that it was going to be as big as it was going to be. And this is a totally new property for them. I mean, this is Jeff Kaplan's first game that he's headed over. I mean, he was a EQ player, joined the World of Warcraft team 
after post World of Warcraft launch. So I mean, this is his first game, as far as I know, that he's launching. So I can understand why he's nervous. And the fact is, it's a Blizzard game, and Blizzard just has a much higher bar from Blizzard themselves and the community as a whole outside of Blizzard kind of holds them to a much higher regard. Yeah, I definitely think that um, they're putting a lot on the line. I think every time that you come out with a new and it's a new IP, right? Like that's so huge because if a World of Warcraft 2 comes out tomorrow, it's an instant hit because people love the world and they love the experiences they've had in World of Warcraft 1 or Diablo 4 or Hearthstone 2, which I don't think would ever happen, but, you know, whatever. Like, because people have um, these, you know, emotional experiences to them that, you know, keep them coming back. And we all know Blizzard fans are incredibly loyal to Blizzard as a company. They're like the Apple of freaking video Maybe. games. Yeah. No, they I totally really, truly are. Way. And so it'll yeah. be really interesting. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that they do well. Um, and I think they will. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing a podcast yeah. about it. And to your point, you you kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. The earnings call. I they said they had what eight million people sign up for Overwatch. Yeah, and that's a pretty good precursor to yeah. how successful I feel like this game will be. I mean, say twenty percent of those people buy the game. That's a lot of people still. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be breaking some records for pre-orders and things like that. I think the last game, wasn't it before Grand Theft Auto 5? Wasn't Diablo 3 the most? Yeah, Diablo 3 was definitely it won there. some. And yeah, it won something. It was crazy. Yeah, and I kind of got to see that firsthand because I'm very, very lucky to live in Southern California. So I've been to a lot of Blizzard so launches jealous. and events. I went to the Diablo 3 one, and that is the craziest launch I've ever seen in my life. There was like, I I don't know, three to 5,000 people there. It was absurd. As soon as I finish up school, Katie and I have already talked about we're ready to go to California. So I want to be where the action is. It's nice. Just uh, housing prices are ridiculous. Get ready Honestly, for that. Honestly, it's on par with Denver. I did not know this. But housing prices and, Calif- and California housing prices are actually... Pretty freaking similar. The right, my my rent has gone up over I think sixty percent in the last five years for about the same yeah, thing. About so right here. yeah, it's <laughs> it's been really awful. Oh my goodness! So last but not least in this article here, uh, we start talking about a ranking system. So a true ranking system has not been implemented into Overwatch. They're shooting to have one in beta, hopefully, definitely, hopefully by launch. But they've even said it may not launch with a ranking system if they can't do it right. Uh, and Jeff Kaplan kind of speaks to some of the difficulties. And I actually had never thought of this. I'm disappointed in myself for not thinking about this. But with so many different heroes, how do you rank somebody? Right, because you can switch heroes all the time, so it's not like, oh, when I play this character, I'm level fifty, and when I play this character, I'm level thirty, because obviously that has drastic implications once you're in the game. So, is there a good solution for this? What do you think, Jimmy? Is there a way to find a way, like a way to properly rank people across all these different heroes and characters? It's super tough. I mean, I think you almost have to maybe break it down by role, but I mean, that's even harder too, because it's not like something like Heroes of the Storm where you've locked in your role before the match even starts. You you get matched into a match, and then you select your hero. And like you were saying, you can change your hero at any time, basically, in the game. So it, it's a really difficult problem to tackle here for for blizzard and i think they're they're being very careful about how they implement it because they don't want the the issues that heroes of the storm has had where they launched the matchmaking system and it just they've had to go back and do a ton of work to fix the problems that they have with that and even to this day it's still not where it needs to be so 
I'm very interested to see how they tackle this problem. It's going to be really cool, I think, when they do it. I, I trust in Blizzard to do this right. But yeah, like you were saying, how how do you do it with 21 different heroes at, uh, at any player's hands at any time? And I was thinking about this, too, because, okay, uh, you know, everyone immediately goes, MMR, MMR. All that does is it makes you want to play your best characters because you have a lower, quote-unquote, MMR with, not MMR, but you have a lower skill cap with your other characters, and it snowballs and eventually polarizes the community. So MMR can't work. So I was like, I wonder if they took a median of, like, your different levels, right? So because there's not enough heroes, you don't want to take, like, a true average or a weighted or an inverse weighted average, you would take a median or maybe an inverse median or something like that Mm -hmm. to do, which could hypothetically work unless you get one character up to, you know, whatever, maybe you're amazing with them and you only play that and you kind of break the system and the rest are at zero, your median becomes zero and you get matched up with noobs all day. It's, it's a really delicate thing and something Jeff kind of said in the interview is initially competitive play was only going to be in a 6v6 scenario so you can only queue up with a full team which this starts to make in my opinion starts to make a little bit more sense but it's also a lot harder to play at that point right because now every time you want to play you have to find five other people which we've all tried raiding at one point you know, that trying <laughs> yeah. to get that large of a group. And again, oh normally gosh. it's 10, 25, 20. Um, but even five other people is kind of a pain in the butt and be able to coordinate those schedules and do all those that's things. Tough. Yeah. I mean, that's why I don't really play team league in heroes of the storm is I need to have four other people all queuing up for this. And I, I do kind of see where he's going with the, having only 6v6 be the ranking system, and I understand the frustrations from players not really necessarily liking that, but 6v6 is, a little, I think, a little easier to to uh, match against. I mean, you, you kind of go off for your win-losses at that point, and that's kind of it's kind of where you build your, your rankings from. I mean, that's it's kind of how it is in like real sports because right. you don't have MMR for basketball teams. I mean, you have, you have stupid stuff in college, like strength of schedule and blah, blah, whatever. Ignore that. Cause the pros don't do any of that crap. And it's literally just wins and losses. Yeah. I mean, it's and also though, if, if those players on that basketball team had to play every position on the court, yeah, like that might <laughs> change it too, right? There like there's there's yeah. a lot of different things that um that change it, and you know people are always gonna have like looking for group to, uh, tools and things like that, but it's just such a pain. I uh, my favorite thing to do in World of Warcraft was raided battlegrounds. It was my absolute favorite thing to do, but you could very rarely do it because you had to get ten people together. And you had to play together together often to be able to do it well. Um, And there was just so many gates to entry. And I don't think it would be quite that bad in an LFG tool, just like in Destiny. You can't do raids unless you go into a full group. And it really, you can't play it by yourself. You can't play Destiny by yourself and be competitive without these LFG tools. But. I'm wondering if they could almost make, take something kind of from League where you queue up for a role, but then that kind of throws a wrench in it. You're like, oh, you want to switch heroes based on the uh, the game and how it's going. Are you locked into that role for that whole game or not? Like, that's, I mean, well, that obviously opens a whole other can of worms. And you have these recommendations, right, of what your composition Mm -hmm. could be, but it's just like a recommendation. Like when I'm on defense on temple of Anubis and it tells me you have too many turrets. I go, you don't know what you're talking about. Overwatch. We, if we had eight people, we would have eight turrets. Trust me. And so there's also like that aspect is you can't put it in the box. It's like the fundamental part of what they're looking to do 
with Overwatch. So I think it's going to end up having to be some sort of MMR type thing. You know, I think in the end, if Blizzard can't find a better overall solution, they're going to go to what like a League of Legends does where you maybe have a solo queue and a normal, you know, kind of group queue and you have separate rankings for those. Uh, or like Rocket League does the same thing because I'm really bad at Rocket League. Um, but I think that's the only <laughs> thing that really makes sense mm-hmm. unless they find a way to go, no, this is the better solution and go from there. Yeah, and maybe they determine MMR based on how well you fill your role. Like if you're an offensive character, how many kills you get or something like that or how much damage you do positively affects your MMR and on a, and on a support your your healing does that but even then we, we've broken down all the healers kind of or supports and some healers just do more healing so maybe that's a bad uh, way to rate that I don't know it, it's very complicated because there are 21 different heroes to to kind of match against yeah, I, various combinations there within. Yeah, so it, this is really interesting thing to kind of consider. If you guys have thoughts on how you think Overwatch could best serve its players with a ranking system, send us an email to the payload at blizzpro.com. We love getting your emails, even though we've only gotten two. Send us more. Uh, we'd love to spend some time with them and do those different type of things uh, on the show with you guys. Uh, Jimmy, I don't think we're going to get to offense this week. Yeah, we might have to wait for Kevin to to come back so we can talk about it. It's all right. We're calling this our most offensive episode ever, and doing it without Kevin just does not feel right. So we're going to wait wait to talk about offense. Uh, Just kind of good to catch up and... You know, just kind of do a face-to-face talk about the state of the game. Talk about some of the things that are mm-hmm. changing, uh, what we think uh, and expect from Overwatch in the next cup coming months. Um, yeah. So, I think we got to get out of here, believe it or not. So that quick. I, that was... It did no, go quick. way quicker than I thought it was. I know, me too. <laughs> I told it's you, though, at the beginning of the show, yeah. I go, there's two of us. I don't know how good it's going to be, but it's going to go fast. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it did go fast. And yeah, thank you guys for hanging out in chat. It was good to get all your guys' yeah. perspectives on what's going on. Some of you are clearly very passionate about how things can and should be done. We really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, send us your emails to the payload at blizzpro.com. And what else do we got here? Uh, shout outs. Jimmy, shout outs for this week. Just thanks for having me on the show. It was fun to do a, a one-on-one conversation about Overwatch, and I'm excited about the the future of this game. It's really cool to kind of see it from the the ground up. So, Dude, so may it be. I didn't. We didn't have you on the show. You are a permanent chair co-host of the <laughs> I know, show. I keep saying that. I don't know why I say that. I don't but know why you. either. <laughs> you're you're welcome. I guess. It's true. I did get to decide who was sitting on the show. So true. you're welcome for picking you as one of the co-hosts. <laughs> um, as for me, a uh, shout out. I actually got to do my first ever Hearthstone casting this week, which was really exciting. Um, I got to do the eSports Hero Retro Brawl. Had some really big names in it. Um, I casted with Astrogation, who is playing in the preliminaries this week. He was in the world championship, I think, top 16 or top 32 um, leading up to Hearthstone World Championship last year. So incredible player. Great insight. Like, I felt so dumb. I'm like, I can at least keep the conversation going. Just keep feeding him questions. And he just took it and ran with it. And he was awesome to work with. So that was a lot of fun. Take it as a learning experience. (laughs) I definitely... I definitely will, and I definitely did. Like, I had never done it before. I found out a few hours beforehand that we were... um, I was casting from a video. So, like, we had no idea when 
like things were switching and we we're going into the next game. So I literally had to watch the video and as soon as it switched, switch the scenes and do everything. Oh, wow. And Keep so it, on your toes. Right. Man. It was rocky at first, but we actually kind of hit a really good stride. So I think it went really well. We got great compliments on it. And so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. That's good. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, you can find more Overwatch stuff throughout the week at overwatch.blizzbro.com. All of our intro and outro music is done by one man, Jake Buttono, over at jakebuttono.ca. Go check out all of his stuff. His links are in the show notes. Um, he actually made, if you've listened to the Well Met intro before, he actually made all that stuff downloadable on his SoundCloud. So if you like hearing that stuff, you can go download it, put that as your ringtone or whatever you like. Uh, our our uh, vectors and logo work and stuff like that is done by... Dread Scythe of ScytheDesigns.com. He does some great work. He's awesome to work with, and he's great to play with, too. He was really good at the video games. You should go check that out. And send us your tweet at Payload Podcast. And emails at the payload at blizzpro.com. And of course, any iTunes reviews are greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much. Uh, find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Addict. Google Podcast soon? Is that out yet? I don't know. We're ready to go. So as soon as it goes no live, <laughs> live, we're ready to go. But until then, uh, you know, wherever else you are, we should be there. Thank you guys so much for hanging out for episode number 13. Lucky number 13. Uh, that's going to do it for myself, Kevin in California, and of course, Jimmy. It's a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. The Payload is a production of BlizzPro. Find out more about Overwatch at overwatch.blizzpro.com. You can find your hosts throughout the week on social media. Find Jimmy on Twitter at DJ Tyrant, Kevin on Twitter at Lack of Realism, and John on Twitter at Kicked Tripod. 